Welcome back everyone. As you can see, my um, simulator bay, my impact screen, I've kind of got it torn apart and a bit of a mess going on right now. I've got my, um, my putting turf pulled back. I'm standing on the, the gym mats that we talked about in my previous, previous uh, video. I thought today I would take a little closer look on how I built the impact screen frame. So I touched on it briefly in uh, a previous video, but I thought I would get into a little more detail today about um, how I put it together, the more around the material that I used. I'll touch on the screen. There's a couple things I forgot to mention in regards to the screen in the previous video as well. So uh, let's get to it. Um, somewhere along the line when I do edit the video, I'm gonna put a couple uh, PDFs and some drawings in and I'll try to uh, do a voiceover and explain uh, give everyone a better idea of what the frame looks like um, from a bird's eye view. So before we get deep into the frame, I just wanted to show everyone kind of a picture of some of my gym mats. So I've got some dusty footprints on them, but as you can see the gym mats themselves, I've got them numbered. So I just started moving left to right starting with number one. So I've numbered them in the bottom uh, right hand corner of all of these particular gym mats. So when I do have to or I want to take them apart and uh, whatever it might be, paint the floor clean uh, from time to time. Uh, we get a lot of rain and a touch of flooding so I will have to pull them up and clean them in here. So I've got everything numbered so it's easy to put them back in place. And keep in mind, if we look at the one on the far left edge, it is a lot narrower than the full one meter uh, gym mat that uh, I previously have shown. Typically the mat next door is one meter by one meter. This one is less than that. So I just cut them with uh, your standard box cutter or one of the heavy duty um, utility knife. And it, uh, it's not very hard but it does take a, a few s swipes at it to uh, trim down the, the gym mats. So there's a little uh, little bit of more information that I didn't touch on the last time uh, we were talking about the gym mats. Also, I figured since we're here, I would talk one more time about the impact screen. Again, the impact screen is from a company called Parta Pro. It's the um, super quiet model, and it is a lifetime guarantee on this screen. So I don't see a lot of that for impact screens that you can purchase around the world. Uh, perhaps there is, and I just don't know it. But personally, I haven't found a lot that do have a lifetime guarantee. Uh, the guarantee with this one basically when if you wear it out, uh, punch a hole through it, whatever it might be, your next screen, the exact same size, uh, same model type of screen, you'll get 35% off the next purchase or 20% off the sale price purchase if these happen to be on sale. So pretty cool uh, little food for thought there, um, absolutely a huge value add there if you're buying one of the super quiet screens from Parta Pro. Again, I'll put the link in the description. Let's get into um, our screen. Also, you can see my mat, my turf. It is folded up as mentioned at the start of the video. Um, I don't use anything to secure the turf to the gym mats. No glue, no sticky tape, no nothing. No silica weighted sand, nothing. I just flop it down. It's heavy enough. It sticks to that um, rubber mat without moving. And it's if you do want to shift it or move it, it's actually quite hard. But if you want to pull it up as I just did right now, um, just pick it up and give it a fold or give it a roll. So pretty simple, pretty easy. That kind of answers and addresses a few questions that I've got in the past here from some uh, subscribers. So just touching on a few things. Well, here's a, a good place to insert some pictures so everyone can have a better look and a closer understanding of the frame build itself. So this picture I've just taken off of the internet, but um, it is based off this design. Uh, of course, the little picture you're looking at here is round tubing, and I've used uh, square tubing, the 50 mil by 50 mil square tubing. So a couple other things that I changed in my, my frame design is I didn't have this uh, center piece in the back. Um, again, with 4,600 millimeter length across, uh, 4600 millimeter length across here. Um, I wasn't required to have that in the back. I was obviously not going to have it in the front. And I didn't put this little short piece in between here either. So just a couple little things that I've changed. But um, 
the design that I built off of is exactly this. I had some corner pieces that I made out of a slightly larger or actually smaller square tubing and then my 50 mil by 50 mil tubing slid over top, vice versa than what you see in the picture. This is a, a narrower tubing sliding into a larger diameter tubing. Uh, I want the exact opposite, kind of the, the smaller um, diameter tubing was the, the corner pieces and the larger diameter tubing slid over and then I threw a bolt in right about here and bolted them together. So you have these Y pieces in the corner, uh, a couple Y pieces in the corner, a couple 90 degrees, another Y, Y, and a Y. So basically what you end up with is a package of components like this. And when you draw it out on a piece of paper, it's pretty easy to understand what you need. Um, that's the only welding I did were these actual corners. And I'm not much of a welder myself, so I actually cut out all of the pieces, supplied the tubing, took it down to a friend of mine that is a, a welder or at least has a better skill of welding than myself. Um, he put them together for me. I dropped them off at the beginning of the work week and picked them up on the weekend when I was ready to do the project. So just keep in mind um, that was uh, how I tackled it. All the materials themselves uh, cost me $145 for all the square tubing that I did and uh, basically a, a box of beer for uh, a good friend of mine to do the welding. So. That was um, a cheap, affordable way to build the screen. I'm not sure what a screen kit costs. Maybe you're, maybe you're better off buying the screen kit based on the cost, but uh, I went this route just for saving myself some time, effort, and delivery. Plus, my screen frame was a little more customized than perhaps some of the screen kits. I know you are buying the tubing locally, but uh, as mentioned in the past video, the round tubing was a lot harder to get locally and at a higher cost than what the actual square tubing was. Square tubing dime a dozen at every steel store or, or hardware store around. So um, my screen, as you can see from the inside part of the frame to the inside corner of the frame, um, my screen was 4,500, but I made the frame 4,600. And I'll scroll down and just show you the screen dimensions that I'm talking about. So outside edge to outside edge of my screen was 4,500 mil. Scrolling back up here, I made it an extra 100 mil wider, the frame. So I had two inches or 50 mil on each side to stretch that screen out and wrap my bungees. Again, you don't want the screen necessarily touching the steel, and if it is, not the end of the world, but you don't want the screen overlapping on your frame. So I allowed a 50 mil on each side, so my screen frame is a larger width by four inches or 100 mil, 50 mil per side. And basically the same, I went 2,900 mil high for the height of the frame. And if we go down to the frame, my screen was 3,000 mil in length. And what I ended up doing there is I allowed for the top of the screen to be mounted in the frame. And with the extra 4 inches or 100 millimeters longer, that screen would lay on top of my putting turf and it would fold over. So any putts or, or low miss hits would instead of going under the screen would roll up to the screen and straight up and, and uh, stop. So that was a pretty important step and I allowed about four inches of that screen folded over laying on top of my putting uh, turf. That's where you get the length of 3,000 millimeters for the height of the screen versus the 2,900 for the height of the frame itself. So keep in mind my gym mat fills this entire section. The gym mat pretty much goes flush with the um, square tubing with the turf on top, fills that whole inside corner. My screen is actually mounted on the outside edge of the frame all the way around. I mentioned before in a previous video that the, the distance between this point and this point were, was 12 inches, one foot. So that's a, the distance that I made. So the screen in theory is 12 inches off the wall. So with that super quiet screen from Part of Pro um, and the appropriate bungees that I wrapped around here and had the screen tight enough that there's no pucker effect that uh, impacts the wall when you hit drives into that screen. So keep that in mind. If you need more time looking at any of these uh, drawings that I had or any of the pieces that I built, um, feel free to pause the, pause the video and gives you uh, 
an idea of what I put for the size of the grommets and the distance apart for the grommets all the way up and down the screen. And of course I didn't have grommets on the bottom because the, this edge of the screen is laying flat on the putting turf. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Um, again, this is just concept based on how I did mine. Again, this is round tubing. I used square. But um, the only real change that I made was not having this back piece in here, not having this cross piece support, um, using the square tubing. And I incorporated that one meter overhang that jetted out probably to where my cursor is here, all incorporated into basically this Y section and uh, another piece comes across and that's what I put my acoustic pop, uh, tiles on. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, need a better description of what I'm trying to explain here, feel free to comment below or reach out to me. Um, the screen itself, or the frame I should say, we touched on it being a 50 mil by 50 mil tubing. You can see that from the outside edge to the outside edge, I have uh, the current measurements of it are 12 inches. Um, I'm going to put a, an overlay in the edited video that are going to talk about the corners and how I fitted the corners. To give everyone an idea, the, the materials for my frame cost me $145. And I did get some of the corners. They're all bolted together. Everything is kind of pieced together and easily removable. But uh, a few of these, these corner pieces, that I guess I'll call a Y shape. They are welded and it's slightly smaller square tubing that inserts into the larger square tubing and then I just drive a bolt as this one is a bolt through to, to pin it together. So that's kind of uh, basically how it works. I didn't put, i turn my camera screen around to make sure everybody can see me. I didn't put a cross piece of steel in the front here. Um, just the one in the back, the screen is actually pinned and hanging off this front bar and the, the overhead bar as well. There's not a bar in the center because I brought my gym mat right to the very back of the frame and then my turf goes right to the back of the frame as well. So basically my screen is hanging down here and there's turf behind the actual screen. Just keeps everything a little cleaner and it keeps the screen, uh, the impact screen from laying on the dusty dirty floor. It's up on my gym mats and if I ever did get any kind of uh, water from some of the heavy torrential rains that we get during the wet season here. If I do get water inside the shed, uh, that screen is up on top of these gym mats. And in one case, I did have uh, quite a bit of water come in during the wet season with uh, some downpour of rain. Um, what ended up happening is these gym mats started to float and uh, brought the screen up with it so I didn't take on any of that muddy, dirty rainwater into my impact screen itself. So gives you a, a, a bit of an understanding of how this looks and what it looks like. So a few people have asked me um, why the gym mats and why put the gym mats on the floor. One of the main reasons was I wanted a flat putting surface to my fiber built uh, center hitting mat. But the other reason is the picture that I got on the um, screen now that I just inserted. Uh, this was last year, probably February. We've got about 8 inches of rain in a matter of 30 minutes. So um, this kind of helped me keep the putting turf, the hitting mat, and my impact screen out of the water for when one of these uh, natural disasters occur. And uh, my entire simulator bay, backyard, everything filled up with water. So this is uh, one of the secondary reasons why I wanted everything lifted up off the ground. So during the time that uh, the flood was occurring, those gym mats, uh, due to them being foam, they started floating and they actually raised a couple inches above my heavier fiber built mat and it picked up my impact screen since my impact screen lays on top about four inches of the material lays on top of the putting turf. The whole putting turf and mats started floating, picking up my screen, keeping it out of the water. Otherwise I would have had kind of a nasty uh, wrecked impact screen. Um, another good point with the gym mats, they are waterproof, they are mold resistant. When you do get them wet, dirty, whatever it might be, hose them off with the garden hose, uh, light pressure washer, wipe them off with a damp rag and just let them dry and you're good to go.
I'll grab my camera and uh, I'll fold it back here. So if I get up into the top corner, you can kind of see what the top corner of the camera or of the screen looks like on how it's physically framed in. That one meter overhang section is all built as one piece but all fitted together the same way and uh, basically tubing inserted into uh, tubing and then bolted together. How did I secure my frame to the wall? Let's see if I can stick my tripod up a little closer. Um, basically I just took a piece of scrap steel and bent, bent it over in a vise, drilled a couple holes and put some steel screws in and I just physically mounted in the right corner and in the upper left corner of the frame, mounted it to the back of the shed. Uh, I never actually did anything like that on the bottom. So the bottom corners are just physically sitting on the concrete floor and there's really no movement at all in the bottom corners. But I did, excuse my stepladder there, I did put one and this is dead center of the screen and uh, you can see it was an afterthought because I just used a piece of scrap uh, steel little angle iron and created a bracket that I bolted right in the center of the screen to the back wall and it just secures the bottom end from uh, moving around and no matter what kind of shots I hit at this particular uh, frame everything holds in really quite secure does not move at all doesn't rattle or jingle if you're seeing some of that back strapping in there, that's got nothing to do with the frame at all. That's uh, to do with the steel building that's uh, built. But I also thought I would touch quickly on um, that one meter overhang that uh, I'll hit flop shots into. And uh, that's basically my, my protection that I have for those skied shots. So let's take a close look at that and I'll take us up on the ladder and we'll have a better look. Here for a minute. All right. Climbing the ladder. So I touched on it again in a recent video, and you can see all the junk I got up here. So on top of this one meter jet out, basically I lined it with uh, plywood and the plywood is screwed to the underside of that square tubing up here. So it's screwed to the underside and um, it's just thin about three eighths of an inch uh, plywood. And then I, you can see I've got some tubes with some shafts in them, some new shafts, some old shafts, a uh, box of irons for someone and a couple spare pieces of foam that I've just had left over that I was just too cheap to throw in the garbage. So. They're just up here resting. I got a chunk of my leftover piece of roll of turf there. So I keep a few things up here that are uh, slightly lighter in size. Just a little bit of extra storage and uh, I keep it, keep kind of the small short profile type boxes so I don't have to see them when I'm standing in the shed. Otherwise uh, when I'm looking uh, from the back of the shed behind me, I would be able to see the, the stuff stored up here. And then of course, for those acoustic panels that are here, I did uh, just glue them to the front of the steel rail as well, just to kind of clean it up and finish off the edge. And you can see how I basically just cut one, one strip at a time and just glued them up, uh, up there with uh, a spray glue. And uh, I used the spray glue to actually put all of the foam acoustic panels on top of the plywood. So that hopefully answers a few of the questions that I've been getting. Um, a lot of good comments and people wanting to know a little bit more about how the frame is built, how the screen hangs on the actual um, frame itself. Just make sure we're back in frame. Sorry for the poor camera work. We'll get here. So basically, down at the hardware store, Home Depot, um, most of your hardware stores are camping and fishing stores. You can get some 
uh, bungee, bungee cord. And um, in my case, I was able to buy a few meters on a roll of bungee cord, tie a knot in the end of the bungee cord, and then they do sell this plastic ball sold separate. Um, and it's kind of a hoop and hook back to each other, and that's how I hold the screen to the actual frame. So, for example, we'll shove it, the bungee through the screen, pull it over, and tuck. And then as you put all the different uh, bungees up and down the sides, it'll start stretching out the screen and pulling it over. I'll go through the dimensions. Um, obviously my dimensions for my screen and my frame uh, may differ from yours, but this will give you just some helpful tips and hints on measurements and sizes. For example, the screen itself is 4.5 meters or 4,500 millimeters wide. And I made from internal tubing of the screen to in the inside to inside, the width of the screen is 4,600. What that allows is basically two inches or 50 mil of extra width on each side. And that allows me to stretch that screen out a little bit with the bungee cords without physically having the screen touch the steel. Cause we want the screen uh, tight enough that we just get all the wrinkles and the ripples out and that extra 50 mil on each side out over and above the width of the screen gives me enough width to tie everything in nice and tight and use the bungees to their, uh, to their advantage. So uh, We did talk about in the previous video how I kind of finish off the edges of the screen with this um, plumber's pipe insulation, it's basically gray foam insulation. One of the pieces that I demonstrated before uh, was about a one meter long piece but they do typically come in about eight foot sections and once I got all, all my bungees on the screen I'll wrap this entire foam around here and it basically covers up and cleans up the corner so that you don't see the gap between the screen and the frame so um, these pieces of foam are roughly for an eight foot section I think they're about ten dollars to uh, to help you understand how much that's going to cost I think that should give us a uh, a wrap on a few of the questions that I've been getting on the YouTube channel so if there are any more please comment below uh, sometimes it's easier for me to make a quick video than it is to try to explain um, how I've done different things and of course uh, if what I'm doing and the, and the method that I've chosen to build this simulator or hang the screen or whatever it might be doesn't work for you this is more of a uh, a piece or these videos are to help you get some ideas and maybe do some brainstorming uh, from yourself on what's going to work best for your environment. So I hope the information helps. I hope this video is useful for some of you out there and uh, if you haven't already subscribed please do and if you like the content and you like the video um, please click the thumbs up. It really uh, helps out and I really appreciate it. Anyway, have a good weekend.